Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a home security kit from Wise. This is the Wise Sense version 2 starter kit. And this came out about a year ago, but they required that you get a subscription to their home monitoring service in order to purchase it. Uh, but they have since rolled back that restriction. And now if you want to manage your home security on your own without a subscription, you can do so. And in the box, you get a hub unit here, along with two door sensors that can detect when a door opens and closes, along with a motion sensor. You also get a keypad in the box, which works with that subscription service if you opt into it. And you can arm and disarm the system, similar to how a traditional security system works. But it's optional now to subscribe to that plan. And we're going to look today about how you can use this without the subscription. And maybe at a later time, we'll cover how the subscription service works. Now, I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge from WISE. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Wise Sense version 2 is all about. Now, the price point on the kit here is about $84 on the Wise website. That, though, does not include shipping. Amazon is selling it for $99, shipping included, if you are a Prime member. At the moment, you cannot buy the hub piece here as a standalone unit, and this is required to get started. You have to buy the kit, at least at the time I'm recording this video, in order to use this in your home. The sensors, though, are available separately. So they sell the entry sensors here in packs of three. The motion sensor is sold individually, uh, as is the keypad. And then they also have some new sensors available that they didn't have earlier, which is a climate sensor. Those are sold in packs of three. They detect temperature and humidity, and you can trigger things based on the readouts from that, and I'll show you triggers and rules in a few minutes. Uh, they also have a leak sensor that you can uh, install and include as part of the system here. Now, the hub here supports up to 100 sensors connecting to it. Go beyond the 100, and you have to get an additional hub, and you can have multiple hubs connected to your account. It connects over Ethernet or Wi-Fi. The choice is yours. I went with Ethernet for my network, but you can go with what works best for yours. Uh, you also have to have it plugged into power, but it uses just standard USB voltage here. Five volts, one amp is all it needs. There is a battery inside that will keep it working should you have a power outage. But of course, if your internet goes down when your power goes out, uh, you will not be able to get any notifications from the system because it does rely on the internet. It was super simple to configure. Your phone will connect to this over Bluetooth and get all the networking set up. And then you can just add all of the sensors one by one to get them up and running. I was surprised by the range on this. Now, they rate it at 500 feet. And I would say that that might be underestimating slightly depending on the scenario. So what I did as a test is I took one of the contact sensors and put it in my mailbox at the end of the driveway. And it was picking up every time I opened and closed the mailbox because it's just looking for that signal to say, hey, I've been opened and then uh, the signal indicating that it was closed. There's not a lot of ongoing communication with these things. So it will, I think, cover a majority of most homes if you put it in the right spot. And this was located in the basement when I was doing that mailbox test. So when I put it into its permanent location upstairs, I think it'll work very well over there. Now the sensors are battery powered. There is no option to wire them in. They communicate wirelessly with the base station here. They run on AAA batteries. So the motion sensor here runs on two of them and the contact sensor uses a single AAA. Uh, they say you'll get about 18 months of battery life out of these, but I think it's going to vary based on how much activity these devices get. So for example, the contact sensor will go off when it loses touch with its little counterpart here, and that will begin transmitting to the base station to say, hey, I am open. So I would imagine if you have a lot of uh, traffic in the area that you're monitoring, you'll probably see less battery life, but you will be notified when it's time to change the battery. There is no wired option for these. They come with sticky tape on the back, but this is the kind of tape that you stick once and it doesn't work so well on the second stick. And it might pick up paint and wallpaper as well. It's a very strong adhesive. Uh, you do have a screw in option with the motion sensor here, but not with the contact sensor. So if you do need to move it at some point in the future, you'll have to replace the tape on the back. 
Now the motion sensor has about a 25 foot range for its detection area with a 120 degree field of view. It is an infrared sensor that looks for motion and body heat before it sets off an alarm. And what you'll want to do is make sure you don't have a air handler or heat source that might throw it off. Uh, the contact sensor here is pretty simple. Uh, it will go off when the two pieces here separate. So you put one on the door frame and one piece on the door. And when the door opens, the pieces come apart. They do need to be about 20 millimeters away from each other in order to detect a door close. And I've got a weird door frame over there so you can see how I have mine configured. And with that photo there, currently that door is reporting itself closed. But you might need to tweak things a little bit to get uh, the connection to work between the two. But it doesn't need to be connected like this. It can be a little bit further out, again, about 20 millimeters for it to detect a door closure. Now, what the sensors will do, just out of the box, is push a notification to your phone. So you can hear the beep coming out of the uh, hub there, and then I'm getting the notification that my door was opened. And then if I put the two things together here, you'll see another notification will get pushed to say that the door was closed. Now, everything gets managed through the WISE app. So let's dive into that and see how we can configure things. All right, here we are in the WISE app. And as you can see, we've got our WISE Sense hub configured along with two sensors, the motion and the door sensor. It is really easy to add additional sensors. You just hit the plus icon here and click add device just like you would any other WISE product. It's really simple to get up and running with additional sensors. Now what I want to do first here is go into the door sensor. And you'll notice here that the door is currently registered as being closed. If I separate the pieces here, it will push that notification again and we'll see that the door is open. Uh, what's neat is that you get a running log of all the events that were picked up with each sensor by day. So you can browse through here and see how often uh, things were opened or closed. And that will record that data for any of these sensors individually. Additionally, if I jump into my motion sensor here, you can see that it's reporting clear. If I wave my hand in front of it now, uh, you will see that it detected motion. Now, I've got another thing here that says watch event, and that's because each of these sensors can be configured to work with one of your cameras. So what I did earlier was configured the motion sensor to turn on one of my WISE cameras and start recording. And that is useful because if you're not always recording with your camera, the motion event can trigger the camera to make a recording. Now, it's going to record motion for a few seconds. After the motion has cleared up, it will push a second notification to tell me that the motion is all clear. And those things will get recorded in the log as well, so you can get a sense as to how long uh, that motion event was. Now, there's not much that you can configure on each of these sensors. They are always going to be reporting back to the hub, but you can control the notifications. So if I go to the gear icon here on my motion sensor, I can change its name. I can also decide that, you know what, I don't need to be notified every time this motion sensor goes off. So I can turn off all the notifications, or I can have it only send me a notification when it detects motion, not the second one uh, when it goes clear. But there are some ways to control the notification behavior through rules, which we'll get into in a minute. You can also adjust the sensitivity of it. So if you're seeing that it's going off a little bit too much, you can uh, dial that down if you want to low uh, versus the medium setting, which is the default. Now you do have a few additional notification options on the door sensor. So if we jump into its settings and I go over to notifications, in addition to getting notified when the door opens or closes, I can also have it optionally uh, notify me when the door has been left open for a certain length of time. And I can set that time here. You can even go by hours. So maybe if I want to know if my door has been open for 13 hours straight, it can push a notification about that. Additionally, I can have it notify me when the door is left closed for a period of time. Maybe you've got a door that should never be closed for more than 20 minutes. Uh, this will be able to notify you when that condition occurs. Now, if you want to control when you get notifications from these sensors, you can do it through a rule. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to hit the plus icon here, though, to set up a rule. And rules always begin with some kind of trigger. So you could, for example, set up a location trigger, which would turn notifications on when you left your house and turn them off when you arrive back. You could have it 
uh, go on a schedule, for example. So maybe every night at 10 p.m. when you get ready for bed, it activates all of the sensor notifications for you. That might be something you might want to do. I'm going to set one up here through a shortcut, though. And the trigger for this shortcut feature is pushing the star icon that you'll see at the top of the screen in a second here. So I'm just going to call this notify. And every trigger triggers actions. So the action that I'm going to trigger is to turn on notifications for my door sensor. And I'm also going to have it turn on notifications for my motion sensor. And I'll save that. And so what will happen now is it will put that little icon there. And maybe when I leave the house, I'll just push the button here. And that will turn the notifications on. I could set up another button to turn them off with a single button push. And that's one way that you can use rules to control how often your phone is letting you know about things going on in the house. What's also cool, though, is you can have these triggers turn things on and off. We saw how you could do that for a video recording off of a wise camera, but I can also control my lights. Let's do a fun little experiment right now. All right, let's go back to the wise app here and set up another rule. So I'm going to go to add rule. This time we're going to do a device trigger and the device that will trigger this rule is my door sensor. So I'm going to select door sensor two and then every time door sensor two opens here, I'm going to have the action be turning off my studio lights that are currently lighting me for this video. And if you see on my list of group actions here, I've grouped together two wise plugs and I call them studio group. So what it will do is actually turn off two plugs which are in this group together at the same time. So I'm going to click save here and then click save again. Now what I did prior to starting the recording here is set up another uh, rule that's the reverse of this one. So when I open this, the lights go off, and then when we close the virtual door here, it turns the lights back on. So you can see how you could configure this to do a lot of useful stuff, like turning on lights around the house. And you're not limited here to a simple open or close. So for example, I could have it turn a light off after the door has been closed for 10 minutes, for example, to give the person who left time to get in their car before the outdoor lights shut off. So you have a lot of control here as to how these little devices can trigger other devices that you have around your home. And this is all, of course, going to control WISE devices, but you also have some flexibility with Amazon's ecosystem. Let's take a look at that. Now, as you know, Amazon provides an app for configuring your Amazon Echo devices, like the one I have on screen here. And they also allow you to set up rules similar to what we just saw on the WISE app, but they call them routines on the Amazon side. So if I click on more here and go to routines, I've set one up already. Now this simulates my mailbox example from earlier, where one of these door sensors is installed in a mailbox. And what's going to happen here is every time this sensor opens, it will trigger this echo to tell me that I have mail. Let me demo that for you real quick here. It takes it a second. There we go. You got mail. So here we've got a non-wise device getting triggered through Amazon. So anything that can be triggered through your Amazon ecosystem can get triggered by one of these sensors. And you can really get pretty creative as to how all of these things can work together. And this is not anything new to WISE. They had a version one of these WISE Sense devices that was out a couple of years ago. Uh, these are new and improved versions of it. And what's neat is that the old devices work with the new hub. So if you have older Y Sense devices or you find some on sale somewhere, they will work with the new hub just as well as the new sensors do. Uh, so you can really get a lot of these sensors, I think, pretty inexpensively, either the old ones or the new ones, and get your home uh, kind of decked out with all sorts of different sensing options that can trigger all sorts of different things. Now, I did look at doing these kinds of triggers on the Google Assistant ecosystem. Unfortunately, Google doesn't yet support device triggers like you saw here with the Wise app and with Amazon. Uh, so hopefully at some point in the future, they do allow that, but right now it is limited to the Wise app and Amazon only. It's not compatible with Apple HomeKit just yet. Now remember, in the box with the starter kit, you will also get the keypad. Like all the other devices, it is powered by AAA batteries. They rate it for about 18 months of life. But remember, it doesn't do anything unless you are paying for the 
monitoring solution. If you don't, the keypad doesn't do anything. I've got it paired up with my hub here, but I can't actually enable or disable any devices with it. But if you are opted in to the service, when you click away here, for example, anytime one of your sensors goes off, the monitoring company will be notified. They'll try to contact you first, and then they'll call the authorities. So you may want to be really careful about how you get this set up if you do go with the home monitoring option. There are ways also to integrate your WISE cameras with this so the dispatcher can see what's happening when one of these things is triggered. You'll notice that there's a home and an away button here because you can configure certain sensors to notify them when you are home. So maybe you've got a back door that shouldn't be opened at night. When you hit the home button here, it'll arm those sensors but not arm others and you can configure all of that through the app. One other thing of note is that there is a panic button here that you can press if there's something going on in the home and you want to get help immediately. And like the other devices, this is powered by AAA batteries. It will last, they say, about 18 months, again, depending on how much you use it. And you can stick it to the wall or screw it down to the wall. The choice is yours, and it talks to you to let you know what you're supposed to do with it when you push a button. But overall, I'm very pleased with the direction WISE has taken with this product. In the past, the hub was plugged into one of their cameras. It was kind of a hit or miss thing as far as range was concerned. The range on this is exceptional. You can put this in a good spot, uh, get all your sensors connected to it, and I found that it covers my house really well, uh, more so than I thought it would, uh, especially given that in some parts of my house I can't get a Wi-Fi signal without an extender. Uh, this seemed to work throughout. Your mileage will vary, of course, based on your home construction, but I think one hub might be enough for most people. And of course, you can buy a bunch of these additional sensors to go with it. I will try to pick up the other two, the leak sensor and the climate sensor. Those might be useful additions, and I'm eager to see what other sensors they come up with for this system. And that is going to do it for this look at Sense version 2. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht. Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel. Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya. And Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.